Hi there. The natural dye world has endless opportunities for combining different dye materials to create different shades of color. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna combine onion skins and marigolds to dye not only wool, but also cotton. Now I normally dye with wool, but for the last year or so, I started experimenting with cotton. I like wool because it's an easier fiber to use and the colors generally are more saturated and vibrant than when using a plant fiber. That's because the fiber structure on something like cotton or linen is completely different than on the fiber from a sheet. So on a plant fiber, there are fewer receptacles for the dye to absorb into. So you're not gonna have as many opportunities for those particles to bond together. The color will generally not be as saturated or vibrant, and you'll generally get a paler shade. So in the past, I've avoided the plant fibers, but I have to say I've been pleasantly surprised with my experiments. So today I wanted to show you both. So I have a skein of 100% wool that was warranted with aluminum sulfate and 100% organic cotton that was warranted with, I'm gonna say this wrong, aluminum acetate, I think? Okay, anyway, they've both been pre-warranted with alum. So let's talk about what we're going to dye them with. Now I have marigolds, which is one of my favorite dye flowers. It was the first video that we ever did was dyeing with marigolds. And we have onion skins. Onion skins are a great thing to have in your dye supplies because they not only make their own fantastic dye, actually this was dyed with onion skins, but they can also be used to supplement a dye. So for instance, I don't have enough marigolds to dye this. These together is 100 grams. So I don't have enough marigolds to dye both skeins. I mean, I could, but it would be a paler color. So I can use onion skins to sort of um, jumpstart that color, to give it some vibrancy, some saturation, to really brighten it. So because I knew that I was gonna be dyeing with onion skins, I did a preparation that kind of um, moves the dye process along because onion skins can take a little bit of time to um, for the dye to release. So what I did was I took my measured amount of onion skins, so I used about 40 grams of onion skins, and I put them in my jar, and then I just poured over hot water. I mean, it can be from the tap hot, it can be boiling water, either is fine. Seal it, and then I leave it for 24 hours, and you can see that without doing anything, the color is already fantastic. So this is already ready to put in the dye pot. So that's what we're going to do. And since I mentioned the dye pot, of course, when you're doing natural dyes, you do not combine your kitchen stuff with your dye stuff. So even though this looks like a great pasta scoop, this is going to be a yarn scoop only. Okay, now, Let's get to dyeing. I'm gonna simply dump all of this into the pot. Um, if you didn't do this and you're working with just dry onion skins, that's totally fine. You would just dry, dump your dry onion skins into the pot with water and you're going to simmer it at a high heat for a longer period of time. So put it all in there. Okay. Now this is not enough. Oh, that's strong. Um, this is not enough water for the dye because you need enough water for the fiber to really move around freely. And it's only to about here. So I'm gonna fill up the rest of the pot with water. Okay, and then now I can add the marigolds 
Now you could always heat the water up for a while and then add marigolds or you can add marigolds now. Either way, the dye is gonna work. There's a lot of wiggle room with natural dye, at least with marigolds and onions. So I'm just gonna add the marigolds in directly. I'm gonna turn on my heat and I'm gonna keep this at a low simmer for, you know, half an hour, an hour, until I see that color really turn to a nice bright yellow or orange. Um, and then we will add our yarn. So before then, I want to take my fiber and soak it in warm water because you want your fiber to be fully saturated before you add it to the dye pot. This helps with absorption and helps um, make the dye more even. So I've had my onions and marigolds simmering for an hour, and I wanna bring something up which I probably should have brought up earlier on, and that is if you're gonna do this dye, especially with onion skins, you should probably either do it outside or make sure if you do it inside that you have a lot of ventilation because the smell can be bothersome. I have actually developed quite the sensitivity to onion dye, so whenever I've been checking this, I have to wear a mask because if I breathe in too many of those fumes, I get a massive headache. So I've already checked the color. I know it looks good. I'm gonna add in my fiber um, and I'm gonna do it really quickly so that I don't breathe in too many fumes. And then I'm going to let it sit in there at a simmer for at least a half an hour. Don't let it boil, just a simmer. Okay, here I go. Oh, it looks amazing. So here's my cotton. Oh yeah. And then here's my wool. I just don't want to get near it at all, actually. So if you have like a hard time cutting up onions, definitely do this outside. So this is going to simmer, like I said, for at least a half an hour, and then I will come back and check the color. And I'm gonna put the lid back on just to keep those fumes down. <laughs> so I'm ready to pull my yarn. So I have my mask back on. And I'm gonna stay away from the fumes, but the yarn looks fantastic. I'm really, I'm really pleased with this. This is the wool. Oops. Let me move this over a little bit. And then this is, this is the cotton, which is very similar to the wool. So I can tell that the wool is a bit brighter, but the cotton still has a lot of really great color. So if you want to experiment with plant fibers, you're still going to get great colors using onions and marigolds. I hope that was helpful. See you next time. Oops, not too close.